we end up with this additional problem from my student's homework set. The specific heat of octane, which has this formula, is this value. With that in mind, how many joules of heat are needed to raise the temperature of 80 grams of octane from this temperature 10 to 25 degrees Celsius? And lastly, which will require more heat? Increasing the temperature of one mole of octane by a certain amount or increasing the temperature of one mole of liquid water by the same amount? As per usual, I invite you to pause the video here, try this on your own first, then hit play, and I'll show you how to do it on the board. Well, in my typical fashion, we're going to start by writing down our 80 grams of octane right here. And then we're going to use the values we've been given, in this case, the specific heat of octane in units of joules per gram Kelvin, or as one of my students likes to call it, joules per geek, in order to cancel out the units I'm starting with and get to their units we're right, or trying to get to our destination units of joules, right? This is all dimensional analysis slash unit conversion that I've taught you elsewhere. So I'm going to lay down a set of parentheses. I want to put something in these parentheses that will cancel out my units of grams. In other words, I need something that has a denominator unit with grams in it. Have I been given that specific to octane? Yes, I have. I've been given this specific heat of joules per grams times kelvins, right? So the grams cancel each other out. I'm not quite to joules, but I'm getting there. I need to do something to cancel out these kelvins, OK? Now, as it turns out, the kelvins are all embedded in the change in temperature. Change in temperature delta T is equal to T final, in this case, 25 degrees Celsius, minus T initial, right? Now, as it turns out, if you're talking about a delta T, not, not an absolute specific individual number T, but a delta T, degrees Celsius and kelvins are completely interchangeable. Why? Well, imagine you converted the 25 uh, degrees Celsius here into kelvins. You got a number. And separately, you converted this 10 degrees Celsius into kelvins and got a number. If you subtracted the 10 in kelvins from the 25 in kelvins, you'd get the exact same answer in kelvins, right? So I'm telling you, if you're dealing with delta Ts, you can just interchange degrees Celsius with kelvins without doing any additional math, OK? So the delta T here in kelvins is 15.0 kelvins, as well as 15.0 degrees Celsius, OK? My kelvins then cancel each other out. And I'm going to insert this number right here, 2.22 joules. So from here, then, I'll let you do the math. You just multiply the stuff all through, round to the correct number of significant figures, and you're left with the answer in units of joules. Now to part B. Part B asks, which one would require more heat? Heating up one mole of octane by a certain temperature or a certain amount versus heating up one mole of H2O. Now, don't get confused here. When it talks about heating up octane, it's not talking about lighting octane on fire. Octane is very combustible. It is one of the primary constituents in gasoline. It's not talking about lighting it on fire. It's talking about warming it up without detonating or, or combusting it, OK? So how do we do that? Well, again, we're going to use this specific heat value right here and do dimensional analysis to eventually arrive at what we're trying to figure out, which is units of energy. Units of energy, SI units, are joules. So I'm going to do some dimensional analysis here and eventually arrive at some answer that has units of joules. OK, that's my target destination unit. Now, I've been given a value for octane that has units of joules per gram Kelvin. I can't really take moles directly to that. Is there some way I could get to something that has grams in it related to moles? Well, yeah, in my typical fashion, I always want to put my units in my denominator being equal to units in the numerator. So I'm going to have moles here, moles here. I bet I could figure out that if I have one mole of octane specifically, so I guess I, I should write more particularly, one mole of octane, C8H18, in the denominator so that I cancel out my units here, right? Can I figure out a specific number of grams? Yeah, that's the molecular weight, isn't it? So we can do that, and we'll figure out the number in just a moment. Now that I have that, have I been given a value that's specific to octane that has grams in it somewhere? I have indeed. I've been given this value up here. So I can put grams times kelvins and 2.22 joules. Now, what I want to do is figure out then how much heat is required to raise one mole of octane by a certain temperature. Now, it does not tell me what uh, temperature change I'm going to do. It's just asking you if you raise a mole of octane's temperature by a certain amount, would that be larger amount or lower amount than doing the same thing to water? So it doesn't actually matter what amount you pick for the temperature change as long as you make it the same. So let's just pretend that we want to raise the temperature by one Kelvin. Okay, As long as I do the same analogous calculation with one Kelvin as opposed to some other temperature change for water, I should get to uh, the same or the, the correct answer, I guess. So Kelvins cancel each other out here. Grams cancel each other out, and I'm left with my answer in joules. 
Now I have to figure out the formula or molecular weight of CH18. Remember, each carbon weighs 12. There are eight carbons, so eight times 12 is a number, 96. Each hydrogen weighs one, and there are 18 hydrogens. 18 plus 96 gives me the total formula or molecular weight, and I'm ignoring decimals here, for octane as being 114, okay? Now if you multiply all this through and round to the correct number of significant figures, you end up getting 253 joules. Okay, you might argue that I did not round to the num correct number of significant figures there, but frankly, I don't actually care because the question isn't asking me to get an answer there. It's asking me which of these requires more heat investment to raise its temperature, right? So now I'm going to do the analogous thing for water. Now, in order to do the analogous thing for water, I need to, of course, multiply it by its molecular weight. So one mole of H2O happens to weigh 18 because each hydrogen, or 18 grams, I should say, because each, hyd each hydrogen weighs one, and there are two hydrogens, and each oxygen weighs 16. So 16 plus 1 plus 1 is 18, okay? Now I'm going to use the specific heat for water. Now I had to look this up. We've talked about it elsewhere. This isn't something that you would just know unless you happen to have just known it. But I will use specific heat of water and put that here, OK? Because I'm dealing with water here. So I use the specific heat of water, not the specific heat of octane, all right? So I'm going to put 4.18 joules per grams times Kelvin. And you'll notice that my grams cancel each other out. Now, I'm not quite there yet because I need to specify a number of degrees or a number of kelvins. And again, because I picked one kelvin for my octane, I'll pick the same amount for water because really it's asking me which of these requires a larger heat investment in order to raise its temperature. My kelvins cancel each other out. I'm left with units of joules. You multiply that through and you end up getting around 75 joules. So what that means is that if you had one mole of H2O and you wanted to raise its temperature by one Kelvin, it would require an investment of 75 joules per mole of liquid H2O. In contrast, if you had one mole of octane and you wanted to raise its temperature by one Kelvin, it would require an investment of 253 joules. And again, we're not talking about combusting or igniting or lighting on fire the octane. We're talking about just warming it, okay? Which of these requires more? Yeah. It's the octane.